Let's talk about our democracy for a minute. <laughs> but let's do it in a way that makes the snowflakes' heads explode. Let me be clear before this podcast begins. We are loud, loud proud, proud, and do not give a fuck. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Real and raw political and social commentary. The freedom to oppress the rights of other people is not liberty, you shit-eating moron. Ah, the smell of freedom of speech. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast, and this is Tony Michaels. Hey, Tony, fuck them. I do this show two hours a day, and I do not do this show two fucking hours a day each Nazis, lessons in humanity. That is not what we do. It's not how we do it. I'm not here to fucking teach you lessons in humanity. Nor what context is. <laughs> oh, they just they just Google the word context. Well, oh, bloodbath con- comments aren't in context. Hey, he didn't say stand back and stand by and go down to the Capitol and fight like hell and they busted windows and smeared shit on the wall and beat people with flagpoles. They surely didn't do that. They didn't walk into our U.S. Capitol with a Confederate flag chanting hang Mike Pence and wanting to kill members of Congress because they lost. Get the fuck out of here, man. Bunch of sad ass sacks of pussies. MAGA losing their minds. Over the bloodbath comment. Here's the thing. The media actually. (laughs) Actually ran with this one. Right? Immediately. It didn't take them four, five, six months. Like normally. I'll say something like right out of the gate. And then two months later. Here comes Morning Joe. Trying to impress Mika. Trying to give him the Tony energy. Trying to give it the Tony energy. You know what I mean? But no, boom, right out of the gate, bitch. Right out of the gate, they're finally getting there. The thing is, they kind of missed the most fucking offensive, vile comment that happened during the speech. Everyone know he won. Everyone knows he wants a bloodbath. Everyone knows that. The problem is it's all projection. That's right. I said it. It's projection. When he loses, there's not going to be a bloodbath. When he loses, there's not going to be a bloodbath. Because they're a sad bunch of fucking snowflake maca pussies. All right? There won't be a bloodbath if he loses. If he wins, you fucking ain't right. There's going to be a goddamn bloodbath. You fucking ain't right. You're not going to take our country just walking away with it. Uh Uh-uh. No, 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 no. That is not how it's going to work. We will not allow you to fucking treat migrants like animals. That was the most fucking vile thing that that piece of shit said over the weekend in his speech. It wasn't about the goddamn bloodbath. It was that he doesn't think migrants are people. That's what the fuck he said. That's what the fuck he said. And that's really what he's talking about. That's the bloodbath he's talking about. He wants his fucking toothless redneck followers, the white Christian nationalists, to go kill the animals that he called them animals. He called migrants animals. Dehumanizing them. This is the fucking, the tenement of fascism, folks. And I'm supposed to stand back and be nice and learn up fascist lessons in humanity? Yeah, you can go get fucked. That's not how this is going to work. No, no, no more. Uh Uh-uh. Nope. Tony will be out front and create as much fucking space for liberals to say what they need to say, how they need to say it now. Not waiting, not till after November, not till right up to the election, right fucking now. Right now is what we're going to do. If you see someone with a Trump hat in public, if you see someone with a shirt, a flag in your neighborhood, if you're in the drive-thru, I was in the drive-thru uh, about a week ago or so, and there was some some woman with a, with a Trump sticker on her Lexus SUV 
probably a $80,000 fucking vehicle with her window down. And I was yelling, Trader 2024, Trader 2024. This is the way that we are going to win. And the way that we are going to win is to make these people absolutely and completely uncomfortable supporting this intolerance. Because we, the left, are not tolerant of intolerance. No, 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 no. I don't care what I got to say, who I got to call skank. I don't give a fuck. If I got to fucking shame Marjorie Taylor Greene for being some cunt-ass skank, that's what we're going to do. See, that's what we're going to do. Because enough of this lib libtard pussy shit. This is no time to be a snowflake. And honestly, if you want to be on the left and be a snowflake, there are plenty of places to snowflake on the internet. Go fucking snowflake somewhere else. Fucko. It ain't gonna happen here. I think I think I made that clear the entire time. That we are not gonna play games with our democracy. We're gonna mock them. We're gonna laugh at these fucking assholes. But we are not gonna play games. And the media is starting to pay attention because over the weekend, one of the biggest stories was that Vladimir Putin was holding people at gunpoint to win his election. And Donald Trump was basically standing on stage saying that's what he wants to do. They're bloodbath bros, man. They're bloodbath bros. And if you want to lose your democracy, fine, whatever you want to do. If you want to go hide and watch, that's fine. But us people in the pro-democracy coalition that are willing to fight for this bitch, you can thank us fucking later. That's fine. We don't need we don't need credit now. We just need you to sit down and shut the fuck up. And we'll save this bitch. Sit down, shut the fuck up, and get ready to vote because you're gonna be his jury. You're going to be his jury in November. Forget his fucking trials and all that bullshit. The guy's going flat fucking broke. He absolutely has to take over the Republican National Committee. He's not only going to steal the National RNC's money. He's going to steal the Senate candidate's money. He's going to steal the House candidate's money. He's going to go take the money from the state parties. And I can't be happier for them, really. Oh, man, I can't be happier that they chose this Republican Jesus. Oh, my God. This deity that they chose, <laughs> it is so good for liberalism because they're, he's absolutely going to fleece all the money in the name of conservative Republicans that they've been dressing up for us for years to take away fucking women's rights, to take away the LGBTQ community's rights, black and brown people's rights. They've been calling it conservatism for fucking years, and it's fascism full on has been, and they've wanted a theocratic monarchy to tell us what to do for decades and decades and decades. The only thing is logic stood in their way. And now brain dead Americans are so fucking delusional. And it's only about 10, 12% of these motherfuckers, but they're really goddamn loud. And that's why we have to be louder. And yeah, there's going to be stuff that's said that's going to offend people. Oh, it's going to make people mad and sad. Who gives a fuck? Get the fuck over it. Quit your fucking boohooing. There is a clip of Barack Obama at a rally, and, and people are booing. And Barack Obama says, don't boo, vote. Guess what? Don't boo-hoo. Get in the fight and punch a Nazi and get ready to be his fucking jury and vote. I just want to amend his one-liner. Because there's so much more context now. <laughs> Don't you love that? The right wing's like, listen, you need to you need to use the proper context when mocking Trump. What the fuck? Get the fuck out of here, man. We need to use context? What'd you just Google this word or something? What the fuck? <laughs> I get to use whatever I want as my weapon to win this election. I don't give a fuck what words I may or may not use. And I don't care what kind of mockery I have to use. And really, I don't give a shit if what fucking pieces of audio I have to use from Trump to convince people that he is the danger that he truly is. 
I don't give a fuck. And we shouldn't give a shit. We as the pro-democracy coalition shouldn't be standing around pointing at each other and go, you can't say that word. You can't, you can't call Marjorie Taylor Greene a skank. Fuck, I can't. Fuck, we won't. <laughs> that fucking bitch is trying to steal away people's fucking rights to exist. You dumb fucking rubes. These, Mark Robinson doesn't want women to vote. I would say you need to kick on the fucking fire, the five fire alarm bells, bitch. Button up. Buttercup. Better get fucking tough and put on your fucking gloves because it's time to lace them up and fight. And it's time to beat back fascism like Mike Tyson is going to beat in Jake Paul's face. It's time. Now, 2024. Enough of this bullshit. And if people aren't with us, fine. Whatever they want to do, if they want to fucking do the bullshit thing that the left has always done and Democrats always do, fine. Whatever. Fuck. What, whatever they want to do. And if the media doesn't continue to do the proper thing, which they did over the weekend, which is to take Trump's phrases and show them to the American people for what they are. They're white Christian nationalism. It's, a, it's America first Nazism is what it is. And they want to fucking kill people. Doubt me. They want to round people up and putting in staging ground concentration camps so they can repatriate them. What? To the dirt? Repatriate them to gas ovens? Is that what you want to do? Huh? Yeah, it sounds like wild rhetoric, but goddamn, it ain't coming out of my fucking mouth. I'm just showing you what the hell they're saying. He called migrants animals, folks. He called them animals. Now, I don't know if you know this, but in the context, in context, Donald Trump de dehumanizes migrants and calling them animals. He, We know how the motherfucker treats animals because of how he talks about dogs. Have you ever heard him talk about dogs? This is why he calls migrants animals, because he wants to treat migrants and he wants to talk about migrants the way that he talks about dogs. And it'll piss dog lovers out there. Oh, my God. It'll fucking piss animal lovers out there everywhere. So if you got a dog Tifa or a cat Tifa, I'm talking about a fucking cat or a dog that fucking hates fascists like Donald Trump. You know what I mean? Even fucking, even fucking my dog hates fucking Donald Trump. Just call him dog Tifa, I guess. And if you got a cat, call him Cat Tifa. You know what I mean? I know we've been talking about charms. Maybe we can put something together for you to where people can identify that your dog and your cat hate this motherfucker and hate MAGA. They're Dog Tifa and Cat Tifa. And by God, they're showing up to the fight too. But the way he talks about animals in general and then calling migrants animals, he wants, he wants to kill migrants. Now... Am I taking this out of context? No, MAGA. Go look up the word context and you'll know that during the presidential primary race of the Republicans, there's a fascist and a Hitler wannabe down in Florida named Ron DeSantis. And Ron DeSantis was talking about shooting people as they come across the border with no due process. There's a goddamn governor down in fucking Texas that can't even, can't even fucking put together a thought, let alone wheel himself around. That is killing migrants in the river, mothers and children in the river, because he sees them as animals. That's the context, bitch. Give me this bullshit about context. Here's the thing. When the right wing is on the internet trying to defend the context of something, the context of something, they know he's in big trouble here with these comments. When America hears that soundbite, and I think we have it, the soundbite, the bloodbath soundbite. When they hear that soundbite of Donald Trump saying those words, I would imagine that they don't give a fuck about the context. Now, if Maybe. I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. If I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. 
And the reason why America ain't going to give a fuck about no goddamn electric car context, which that's not the context that he said it in. Trust me, I'm going to prove it to you. I'll show you. I'll show you the clip that's doctored, and I'll show you the clip that they're saying is the full undoctored clip. They all fucking watched as that son of a bitch said, stand, stand, stand back and stand by. And then they came to our fucking capital with the Confederate fucking flag. They shit on our capital. They broke the windows. They threatened to hang lawmakers. They were going to kill people because they lost. And they're a bunch of goddamn pussies. And they committed violence. Killing police officers. Back to blue, right? Right, mega? Right, mega? And you don't think that this country's going to hear those fucking words and going to go, oh, huh. But again, even those words aren't the worst worst he said this weekend. He's been saying they're poisoning our the blood. They're poisoning our country. It's going to be a bloodbath. This country's in big trouble if I don't win. I mean, he's been saying that shit for a long fucking time here. The white Christian nationalists are threatening people in, in their communities. Fuck, they they were cheering on having a, a trans teenager down in Oklahoma getting the life stomped out of them. They were cheering it. And then even after they were burying the fucking trans student, the trans person, they were cheering on that that trans person died. At the hands of the student, saying it wasn't brutal enough. It's about time this fucking country wake the fuck up. And I just want to give everyone the real context out there. Because I know MAGA and Trump thinks that his little cult is going to save him. But a bunch of fucking toothless trailer park rednecks on their fucking rascal scooters, friend aren't going to win you the second civil war against, I don't know, about 150 million Americans who are willing to fight for their fucking democracy. I hate to fucking break it to you. And I hate to break it to Maka, but you, you are really going to get, you are really going to get hurt and shamed in, in real life soon. I know you feel the heat on social media and you're starting to really feel the heat of liberals out there because there's plenty of liberals that are sick of the shit. And they're not gonna they're not gonna hold back to defend their fucking country and their goddamn democracy anymore. Their democracy is way more important than fen- offending a few fucking liberals. So they're just gonna defend it. But it's gonna start to happen in real life. You're gonna start to get shamed in grocery stores. You're gonna want to throw away your Trump hats. You're gonna want to throw away your Trump shirts. You're not gonna want to put signs in your yard or put stickers on your car. And the reason why is because this country is going to call you for what you are, a fucking traitor. You're a traitor to our Constitution and to your community. You're letting these fucking scumbags steal our children's lunch money to give it to a bunch of white Christian nationalists in school vouchers. You're, you're letting these white Christian nationalists steal away your fucking wife's, your sister's, your daughter's rights because you want Trump to be elected because he's some fucking snowflake pussy ass bitch. You're going to let them steal your community members' dignity and humanity away, black people, brown people, the LGBTQ community, because you're a little snowflake and you can't handle that Donald Trump lost in 2020 and he's about to get his fucking ass handed to him in 2024. Frankly, at the ballot box, at the ballot box, folks, it is going to be a fucking bloodbath at the ballot box. That's the context. Bloodbath. At the, at the ballot box, we are going to bury these motherfuckers under mountains of fucking votes. Because this t- country is not only sick and tired of Donald Trump, but we're sick and tired of the 10, 12% of this fucking country, the minority ideology telling us what the fuck we are and aren't going to do. And what freedoms we can and cannot have. Texas banning fucking porn, Oklahoma trying to ban porn, taking away fucking people's rights. Enough of this shit. We've had about enough of your fucking bullshit. 
your blood poisoning talk, your fucking racism, your fucking bigotry, conflating issues and lying and spreading misinformation. It's about enough of that shit. And if everyone isn't speaking up, I mean, you know, it would be something if you seen someone in real life, I don't know, in the grocery store and they had a Trump hat on and you just say, hey, how's it going, traitor? What are they going to do? Huh? What are they going to do? Oh, you hurt my feelings using your First Amendment rights. Calling me obviously what I am because I'm wearing the hat that says it on it. I mean, if I wore a, sh a shirt around the grocery store, call me an asshole, please. And I got offended that people were calling me an asshole. That doesn't make much fucking sense, does it? Trust me, it'll make sense to these people. I don't care what part of the country you're in. Even if you're in a red state, I don't care. They're going to know the context. They're going to know it immediately. It's time this country stand up and say with one resounding voice, uh-uh, bitch, nope, not going to happen. You are not going to walk around this country without the shame that you wear on your fucking sleeve. Not going to happen. We are going to show the world who you are and what you are. And if you don't like it, fine. Fine. It's your right, MAGA, to be offended. It's your right to be offended that we call you what you are. You're a traitor. Oh, you're an American. Maybe put some fucking thoughts together. Maybe figure out what reality truly is. Then we can start to have conversations. Like I'm going to fucking sit and have a fucking conversation and try to learn up some goddamn fascist Nazi MAGA, some Cheeto humping fuck nugget, lessons in humanity. Get the fuck out of here. That is not what we are doing anymore. We done tried that shit for years now, and you're still fucking brainwashed. Thinking that his comments are out of context? You people are wild, man. You people are wild. You're like, no, no, no. January 6th is just a tour of the Capitol. And he didn't really mean bloodbath, I swear. I swear it. <laughs> it's time for this new brand of liberalism to show its face. And it's time for them really to, you know, get with it and be the leaders out front as opposed to a bunch of goddamn libtard pussies. Because that's truly what some of them are. And they give us a fucking bad name sometimes. I mean, it's not that I don't want a part of the coalition to vote. And it's not that I don't want to toughen them up a bit. You know, there's plenty of plenty of people on the left out there that still think that we're able to convince people who who think migrants are animals. They think migrants are animals, folks. They think migrants aren't humans. That's where they start. And you're going to pile them with some facts and data that you heard from NPR or Pod Saves America or or, or the MSNBC, some polls that you heard on MSNBC or some kind of court motion that you heard about on Midas Touch. That's what you think you're going to fight back with? <laughs> you're funny. You're fucking funny. If you don't want a bloodbath in this country, because that's what the fuck they're calling for. I don't know if you noticed that over the weekend. That's what they're calling for. That's what they, that's what he wants them to do if he loses. If he loses, he wants them to go kill us. That's what he wants. All the people who vote against him and reject him, he wants his army of Cheeto humping fuck nuggets to come kill us. Just like when Putin sends soldiers to the polls with guns. If you don't vote for Putin, we just may use this gun on you. It might be a bloodbath. It's going right? to be a bloodbath for the country. They're bloodbath bros. This is what they want. 
This is what they do. And are you gonna are you gonna stand back and stand by and let them steal our democracy from us? Huh? Are you gonna get a little tougher and not be such a goddamn pussy? <laughs> and not be so goddamn offended by what Tony Michael said. Oh, he called Marjorie Taylor Green a skank. Oh my god. Oh no. Tony called Marjorie Taylor Green a skank. She is a skank. And she's a cunt who's trying to steal away fucking women's rights. And she ain't going to stop there. She ain't going to stop with the LGBTQ community. She ain't going to stop just with people who who aren't Christian. She's not going to stop at people who don't adhere to her brand of Christianity. She ain't going to stop there. That's not what Nazis do. They don't go, oh, you know what? (laughs) We gassed enough Jews in the Holocaust. That'll be enough now. We'll stop at six million. You're right. That's probably enough. He called migrants animals and they cheered. He's the Republican nominee for president of the United States. He said people coming in this country to work hard and become American so that their families can better their lives like your fucking, your, your fucking grandpappy did and his wife did. He called them animals, dehumanizing them. So excuse the fuck out of me. And excuse the fuck out of the pro-democracy coalition if we don't give two fucks if you're offended by something anymore. We don't give a fuck. Be offended. Go sit over there and be offended, though. Just just go over there. Sit on the bench. Wait for November because we're, we're going to need you. We'll, we'll come and get you, you crybaby little bitch. When it's time to fucking vote, we'll let you know because you need to sit this one out. You clearly are not. You clearly are, are not geared up. For this ballot at the battle box, at the at the ballot box, because it's going to be a fucking bloodbath. He even said so. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this. We'll be right back. Mark, 60 seconds. This is the Tony Michaels podcast. Hey, gang. Join your favorite Discord miscreants at the Dive Bar of Democracy, that's M-O-C-K, every Friday after book club and get the weekend started right. One of our hosts will surprise our panel with three topics no one knows about ahead of time, so they're just as surprised as you'll be. That's every Friday after book club, fucking fam. See you crazy kids there. Tony's Twitch stream, The Shit List Roundup, at twitch.tv slash the Tony Michaels. We're back to the king of brilliance. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Welcome back to the show. Found to be a bloodbath today here on the show. I'm like, I'm jolly taking it out of context. Don't take me out of context, please. Please don't take me out of context. Oh, boy, did you guys watch Nine Bar of Democracy on the Discord? If you didn't, you missed it. That's right. The Discord community now has their own show over on Discord. It's called the Nine Bar of Democracy, where m- members of the fucking fam, personalities of the fucking fam join together. And they have their own show. They have their own discussion on topics. They had a great time on Friday. You guys should join them. Maybe I'll join in in a couple weeks. Uh, with the at the dive bar of democracy you guys should really get in on it. oh you want to know where to go tony tell us where to go you go to the tony michaels.com that's right you hit subscribe at the fucking top of the page get with it get in or get out let's do it and then you just pan on down to memberships here's the discord server but just go to the book club the book club is in the discord server you're going to want to download the discord app on your phone Don't wait. Do it now. It doesn't cost a single fucking nickel. This grift is free. We got the worst grifts in the world here at the Tony Michaels podcast, but they're not for money. They're for fucking democracy. So they count even more. 
That's right. Our grifts are for democracy. So go to the grift that matters most to the book club. Here's the book they're doing right now. You guys know my friend, Dr. Rachel Bittacoffer. They're doing Hit Them Where It Hurts, How to Save Democracy by Beating Republicans at Their Own Game. That's the book that they're doing. The Library of Democracy is sponsoring the book club over on the Discord. And then on Fridays, that's when the book club meets. After that, you can go watch the dive bar, dive bar of democracy. So go check that out in the Discord. It's a banger. The Discord's a banger. It really is. And it's a place if you want to find some people on your social media platform that you like. Because I know everyone's kind of got their own social media platform that they're like, I like Twitter personally. I still like Twitter. The one reason I actually am kind of liking Twitter more and more. And the reason why is because Elon Musk is totally fucking destroying it. Number one, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh my God, it's such a dumpster fire over there. But let me tell you something. If you want to go to a place where you can punch on some Nazis, you want to go where the Nazis hang out. And that's pretty much where they kind of fucking hang out now. They all hang out there. So you just start swinging a little bit and you'll you'll connect with a few of them here or there. You know what I mean? I mean, not physically. I'm not talking about violence here. I'm not talking about bloodbath type stuff. I'm talking about digital bloodbath type stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, take me out of context. <laughs> what a bunch of goddamn pussies. Speaking of uh, X-Chan and Twitter, what a bunch of pussies. But let me finish my thought here, and then I'll get to them whining and crying about context. Uh, on the Discord server, everyone joins in. It's kind of like the cross-pollination of social media, as it were, for politics. You know what I mean? It's becoming a place where people can communicate uh, from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram to YouTube to Twitch. They kind of all join forces there to talk to each other in one spot. Because if you're on YouTube right now and you only come to the show on YouTube and you're typing in comments on YouTube, you're only getting part of the show. You're only getting a small part of what this community offers. Just a small part of it. This community, this fuck'em fam that you folks are building is so much bigger than that. And I, I, I know people want to give me credit, but I, I, it's not, it's not me. The only thing that I did do with the fucking fam with the Discord is I stood back out of their way. <laughs> That's all I did. I just made sure they had a space that they could create their own, because that's truly what the fucking fam is great at. You guys are not only are you fucking smart and intelligent, but you guys are fucking talented. There are people in the fucking fam making clips that we're posting on social media and the YouTube. We're not making those. They're using the show to make their own art. They're making memes over there. They're creating memes over on Discord to share around the internet. So like if you're if a Twitter person's making memes, they can go in the, you can go on Discord and steal their Twitter memes and then go over to Facebook and dump those fucking anti antifa memes on Facebook. Or on Instagram, wherever you, you know, hang out on a usual basis on your social media. So the dive bar of democracy, this show, I think is so important. And the reason why is because I just want to stand back out of the way and let democracy do its thing. That's truly, truly what the fucking fam is about. That's what this show is about. Give, give you what you need to have in your arsenal to go create fuckery to save your democracy from these fucking fascists because they're everywhere oh my god and they are in our governments and we need to get them the fuck out of our governments they can stand on street corners with stupid fucking signs yelling and screaming about god and you know how jesus is coming in my face or whatever they say i don't know is that what they say do they hold signs that say jesus is coming on my face i don't know <laughs> oh boy <sighs> but <laughs> I digress if you want to truly take advantage of the entirety of the fuckum fam and what it has to offer get your ass over to the discord make sure to download the discord app it is fucking free and it is easy to use 
once you have it and once you have a sign up and once you've got your email in there and you know where to go. And how you know where to go is go to thetonymichaels.com and click the Discord server or the book club. I promise you, I promise you, those people in there, you'll find that they love democracy and they love fighting for it. And I also promise you, do not be a snowflake. Don't be a snowflake because they will probably eat your fucking snowflake lunch. <laughs> or as Alex Jones says, you're left his ass. Nom, 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 <laughs> you ass eaters. That is, they're a bunch of ass eaters over there on Discord. So toughen up, get over there on the Discord, join the fucking fam, join all uh, the fuckery, join the benefits of the fucking fam because it's free, free, free over there. It isn't a grift. You don't have to pay for a membership to see the Discord or communicate with people on the Discord. It's all free over there. You can come join us. Um, and and be part of the fucking fam over there and cross pollinate against uh, social media platforms, share memes, share videos, see what everyone's talking about. I mean, there is tons of stories that people, the first place they learn these stories uh, of what's happening to our democracy, they learn it right in Discord. Uh, one of those stories this morning should be how Donald Trump can't make bond. <laughs> Oh fuck. The dude can't make bond. He can't he can't he's supposed to be a billionaire. Now this was um oh this is almost exactly a month ago this clip that I'm going to show you from his attorney um Alina Habba DSL. I don't know is that her is that her little title DSL? I thought it is that what and that I oh that means dick sucking lips. Oops. Oops. Um well DSL Miss DSL here this is what she said about a month ago about the bond and the money that she owes in New York. Go ahead, lady. Let's see what you have to say. My Just goodness. My goodness. <laughs> um, so Judge Engeron says that he wants this $350 million within 30 days. Now, I know that you're planning on appealing this, but you've still right. got to put up the full amount pending that appeal. Does Donald Trump so. have that kind yeah. of money sitting around? Yes. I mean, he does. Of course, he has money you know he's a billionaire um of course he does he's a billionaire he's a billionaire then why did he have to go suck dick to put up the 90 million dollar bond for eugene carroll huh i'm not making that shit up i mean you know i'm kind of postulating a little bit but no one just gives you 90 a 90 million dollar bond no company puts up a 90 million dollar bond if you didn't you know grab them by the whatever <laughs> come on man are you kidding me? The best part is, is this bond, this $90 million bond, apparently they used his property as collateral. And I don't know if you know how bonds work and how collateral works, but dude's going to lose his shit. And by lose his shit, I mean the banks are going to lose the properties that are mortgaged. Motherfucker is screwed here. Absolutely fucking screwed. It's totally, he's totally fucked. He's totally fucked. And he ain't really got no more property to put up as collateral. And the reason why is because he's all, he's all, he has it all fucking mortgaged. What interest he does have in these properties, he gave to the fucking bond company. And the rest of the interest in the property, the fucking bank has it. It's called foreclosure. I don't know if you know what that is. They, it's a it's a legal procedure where they take you to court and they take the title to your property and then they auction that shit off. Now, I don't know which is the first building to go or not, but does it really fucking matter here? Does it really matter? All all's I want in this country is for there not to be a single goddamn building with his fucking name on it, pretending that he owns that son of a bitch because he doesn't own these motherfuckers. He doesn't own them. He owns the right to put his name on them. The bank owns them. Let me ask you something. Let me let me put it in a little bit of context for MAGA. If they're listening, which some of them probably are. Let me put it in context for you here, you little shit eater. You might have a mortgage or your mommy in the basement that you live in, you keyboard cowboy. Your mommy might have a mortgage. And if your mommy, if your mommy decides not to pay the bank for three months, 
your mommy's going to find out whose fucking basement you're actually living in. And it ain't hers. It's the fucking bank's basement, dumb fuck. That's how mortgages work. <laughs> That's how collateral works. <laughs> Dude's about to lose his basement that he lives in. And I couldn't be happier for him, really, honestly. I mean, he seems to think that Mar-a-Lago is worth a billion and a half dollars. So why didn't he just put that up for collateral? Huh? Why didn't motherfucker just go to the bank and say, here, bank, listen, listen, this property is worth at least a billion dollars. It's worth at least. Oh, that's right. Because the bank's like that property ain't worth near a billion dollars. That thing's a piece of shit. And it has your name on it, which devalues it even more now. No one wants that fucking piece of shit. Honestly, the next person that buys Mar-a-Lago, even though it's a historical building, they'll probably bulldoze that bitch to the ground because it's such a stain on our country now because he's been selling top-secret documents out of it. So, yeah, dude's in big fucking trouble. I mean, huge trouble because not only... Not only can he not fucking afford to pay back the fucking bond and the collateral on the $90 million bond, but he can't get his hands on a bond for the $464 million. Let's listen. We're back with breaking news on one of Donald Trump's legal cases. Trump's lawyers say the former president has been unable to get a bond for the $464 million fraud judgment against him in that civil fraud case. Back with us now, Catherine Christian, former assistant Manhattan district attorney and MSNBC legal analyst. So, Catherine. <sighs> Listen, the banks, the banks love me. The insurance companies love me. They had nothing wrong with what I did. I didn't overvalue it. There was no fraud. They love me. The banks love me. The insurance companies love me. Let me tell you what a bond is. I don't know if anyone knows this or not. Let me tell you what a bond is. Is It's an insurance policy. That's That's what it is. <laughs> and a bond is a cash or collateral insurance policy on a payment or a what might be future payment. A lot of times, like when you hire a contractor, right? Well, you hire a contractor. And on the contractor's truck, it might say insured and bonded. Okay? It might say that. And really, honestly... They might put it on their business card. They might print it on their T-shirts next to the, the uh, 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 Better Business BBB accredited shit, right? Oh, I've done this shit before. Yeah, I have had to put up a bond for business. I've had to buy insurance policies with a certain type of license that I've had. Yeah, you put up a fucking bond. That's how it works. And all it is is the insurance that you'll make a payment if something goes wrong. In other words, like, let's say it's a roofer, right? Let's just use that. And you have a hailstorm and you hire someone who's bonded and their crew fucks around and fucks your roof up. That means they're bonded with the state under their license. They're in, in, licensed to do business. So that way, that way you're insured that they have fucking payment somewhere, that there's a company backing these fucking idiots in case they fuck something up. That's what a bond is. It's, it's insurance for the bank. Listen, the bank love me. The insurance companies love me. I pay back all the loan. Now they won't give him a bond. All that, all that bullshit that he puked up in front of the fucking courthouse doors for weeks and weeks and weeks. mar lagos worth a billion dollars. Oh, banks, insurance companies love me. It was all fucking lies. All of it. Now, we all knew that, right? We all knew that. We all knew that he was completely untethered from reality. And we knew that MAGA was untethered from reality. Well, this morning, reality smacks him in the face. Because this is what happens, folks. This is why we don't need to fucking stand around trying to fucking decrypt some fucking court motion somewhere or some decision that a prosecutor is going to stay on a case in Georgia because she was fucking some dude, but now he's leaving the case. It's so stupid. 
Why are you wasting your time with that narrative? When the narrative is this guy is a fucking fraud, a phony, and a liar. He ain't a billionaire, never has been, never fucking will be. It's all lies. It's all deceit. And here in the next few days, the chickens of of the bloodbath are going to come home to roost. Because let me tell you something, on Donald Trump's finances, that shit's going to be a fucking bloodbath. Oh, man. Oh, man. Is his checking account going to have a fucking bloodbath in it? Why do you think they rushed to steal the RNC's money, folks? Why do you think they rushed? I mean, they rushed to steal the Republican National Committee's money. And that's what it is. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see criminal charges out of the RNC. Not, not, well, not the people they fired. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, Zephy uh, corrects me in Discord. It's the Russian National Committee. I'm really sorry. I misspoke. It's the Russian National Committee. Because we all know that the R now doesn't stand for Republican anymore. It stands for Russian. Style works now. What do you want? I, I don't know. I mean, go look up the word context, friend. <laughs> oh, my God. His finances are going to be a fucking bloodbath. <clears throat> do you want to see what it would look like to see um, Donald Trump's balance sheet? This is what it would look like. Woo! To see his balance sheet right now. Holy fuck. Oh, my God. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> So what it would look like to see Donald Trump's balance sheet right now. Uh, speaking of MAGA idiot news, I'm just wondering what you all are doing tomorrow. I know yesterday was a national holiday. It was St. Patrick's Day, which I actually, I have, I have a great uh, video for you for St. Patrick's Day. So I don't want to get out of the holiday spirit altogether, but I want to stay in the holiday spirit for tomorrow. Because tomorrow there's a national holiday. I don't know if you guys know this. Um, it's a new national holiday. Uh, at least we should make it a national holiday, I think. Um, it is the, I mean, I'm just wondering what y'all are doing for the National Navarro Reports for Prison Day. Uh, it's tomorrow. Don't forget your whistle. <laughs> or your cowbell, for that matter. Uh, make sure you bring your cowbell and your fucking whistle. Uh, here is, here's a little bit of Navarro here. Maybe. God damn the internet. Look at this thing. What the fuck? All right. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Let me, let me, let me reload this bitch. It fucked me. me see how the internet is? It's probably the deep skate. The dirt skate. It got me. Ha! Huh? It got me. Maybe I should have paid some Russian spy uh, to lie to the FBI for me. That way I'd have decent internet. All right. Let's go. Witness stand is inside. Thank you. Uh, WW. <laughs> Please stop. Please stop. This is um, this is what's wrong with America here. www.defendpeter.com. Hey, subscribe now. <laughs> Defend- subscribe now. <laughs> Oh, my God. I wish we could play that for two and a half hours, but we got a lot of news to get to. So I just wanted to know tomorrow's a national holiday. It's National Peter Navarro Reports for Prison Day. What are you doing uh, to celebrate it uh, tomorrow? What are you doing to celebrate it tomorrow? Huh? <laughs> uh, here is uh, Grandpa's statement on blood. The news media took me out of context. Uh, they took what I said and they clipped it and then they played what. Can you imagine? They played what I said out loud. They played what I said out loud in the microphone. <laughs> what a fucking pussy. Listen to this. The fake news media and their Democratic partners in the destruction of our nation pretend to be shocked at my use of the word bloodbath. <laughs> I'm not shocked. What do you mean? Who's fucking? I know the media's fucking shocked by this. I was not shocked. I, was not, I wasn't even shocked when he called migrants animals. I know that's how he feels about them. I know that he wants to dehumanize migrants so much that his supporters will kill them. 
I know that. I'm, I've been saying it out loud. These white Christian nationalists are the fucking threat. They want to kill black and brown people. They want to kill people who aren't don't adhere to their type of religion, which is delusion. But that's what they want to do. They want to kill people because they can't make them do what they want. So they'll just get rid of them. That's how fascism works. So, yeah, I'm not surprised by your fucking word that you use bloodbath, even though they fully understood that I was simply referring to imports allowed by crooked Joe Biden, bloodbath. which is killing our automobile industry. This is so stupid. This is really stupid. And the reason why it's really fucking stupid is because it was Joe Biden and the Democrats who fucking signed the CHIPS Act. I don't know if you guys remember four years ago. They keep asking us, are you better off than you were four years ago? Bitch, you couldn't buy toilet paper four years ago, okay? Yeah, we're a little better off. I mean, there's a lot of other things, but you couldn't even fucking buy toilet paper, bitch. Yeah, a little better off. Because of the pandemic four years ago, that hellscape that we were in four years ago because of Donald Trump. He was the president four years ago. They're pointing it out to you. They're like, yeah, he was president four years ago. Was it, Were you better off? Yeah, that year sucked. We, we were subjected to the Tiger King, okay? The entire nation had to know what who Joe Exotic was. Fuck out of here. Are we better off? Yeah, I think so. But Democrats and Joe Biden realized that there was something at stake that the pandemic really pointed out that, hey, we're really reliant on foreign countries to manufacture microchips for us, particularly in the automobile industry. I don't know if you know this, but we couldn't manufacture automobiles. We literally in this country, in America... In America, we couldn't manufacture automobiles because we were so reliant on foreign governments. Guess who changed that shit, bitch? Guess who made it a bloodbath for those foreign countries who are making our microchips? Joe Biden. Joe Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Bat, bat. Brandon really showed them. You fucking boneheads, they're building factories all over the country to build microchips here to put into cars that they're manufacturing here. We manufacture cars here. You fucking boneheads. Very rarely do they manufacture cars overseas and put them on fucking container ships and send them here. They make parts. They make parts over there. They ship them here and then they assemble the car here because it makes more economic sense dummy but tony that would mean that there's honda factories and toyota factories and hyundai factories all over the country there is you dumb motherfucker <laughs> toyota is in more red states than they are blue states dumb motherfucker so stupid you know who knows about all of this? Union members of the auto industry. The UAW knows all of this. They actually, they actually just did a fucking deal. <laughs> they did a deal, the UAW, with the auto industry. And they told the auto industry, we're going to get our fucking share now. And guess who went to the picket line with them to help them get that deal? It wasn't no fucking Donald Trump. Donald Trump went to a non-union factory and had people hold up union signs pretending to be union members because he knows he needs to get union members to vote for him so he can take away their fucking workers' rights. That's right. If you're a union member out there and you're voting for Donald Trump, you're voting against your rights to work. That's right. You're voting against your rights to labor, you fucking bonehead. You're voting against your own interest. And how dare you, you treasonous piece of un-American shit. I can't even believe you carry around a union card. You should be ashamed of yourself. That's how we should treat these fucking people. You should be ashamed of yourself. Voting for someone who is absolutely going to strip people of their rights to be in a union while pretending to have people come to a factory that is non-union and hold up signs to pretend to be union so you'll vote for him so he can dupe your dumb ass. You should be ashamed of yourself that you believe that garbage and that trash. 
And anyone who believes this fucking trash that somehow Joe Biden is killing the auto automobile industry and not making sure that our American automobile industry is strong. Not only that, our parts industry is strong. You're a fucking bonehead. You're a fucking bonehead. And you need to be told to your face that you're a fucking idiot. Just like that. And really, honestly, if these people, if these fucking megalodites, these fucking cheeto humping fuck nuggets get offended because you're telling them the truth, good. It's about time this fucking country feels some goddamn shame for what they've done. So either stand up and say something or sit down and shut the fuck up. Let the rest of us handle this, okay? Got it? It's time to get tough. Powder Puff. He goes on to say, The United Auto Workers, but not their leadership, fully understand what I mean. Not their leadership. Those people at the UAW, they hate me. They hate me. But I want to convince you that it's only the leadership. Listen, I don't know if fucking boneheads out there understand. I've never been in a union. Never been in a union, but I at least understand how unions work. Management, management and companies are not in a union. They're not because they're managing the company. So their interest is with the corporation. See, the leadership of the union is with the, the interest is with the workers and the members who trade that labor to the corporation that has the managers. You see? And he's trying to twist around reality again. And it's going to bite him in the ass. Because he was in Ohio this... He was in Ohio. He was in Ohio. And he was saying that the United Auto Workers fully understand what he means. That there's going to be a bloodbath and killing of the automobile industry after Joe Biden just walked across, rocked and fucking protest and stood at the picket line with these UAW workers? Are you shitting me? No, 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 friend. The union isn't stupid. These union members aren't stupid. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say that some of them aren't. A reckoning of truth is coming for these dumb motherfuckers. Just like a reckoning of the truth with these fucking bonds and these judgments against him are about to create a bloodbath on his finances. Then he says this, which is the wildest and craziest thing I think this fucking moron has said in a long time that these people soak up and eat. He says, with electric car mandate being pushed by Biden, which there isn't one, there soon won't be any cars made in the USA unless I'm elected president, in which case manufacturing will thrive like never before. He really believes, and his people believe, that electric cars cannot be manufactured here in the United States. It's fucking mind-boggling. The twisted pretzels that their narratives, that their fucking narratives create. So we're online, right? We're all online. We're all on social media. And we're watching a bunch of fucking right-wing incels simp to Elon Musk about his cyber truck. But it, is, it is not a truck, folks. <laughs> Listen, I come from rural Missouri. And that fucking thing is not a truck. You can't drive that bitch through a mud puddle, okay? You can drive a fucking truck, even the worst of them. Even even like a Dodge Dakota. I mean, there's times where Dodge Dakota was okay, but they have mostly their shit. A Chevy S10. There's a lot of times a Chevy S10. Is it really a truck? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's got a truck bed. But you can't even drive a cyber truck through a mud puddle. I mean, don't take my word for it. I'll show you a video here in a minute. But these Cheeto humping fuck nuggets, because this idiot says electric cars can't be made in the United States. What a fucking bonehead. All in the same breath. All in the same fucking breath. We have... Elon Musk pimping his electric cyber truck, which is American made. And they're like all excited about this piece of shit truck that Elon Musk made. By the way, Tesla stock is way down. 
I don't know if it has to do with all his Nazi statements or if it has to do with how badly the cyber truck isn't a truck. Uh, Debbie um, is, <laughs> hey, I drive a Dodge Dakota. I'm really sorry, Debbie. Everyone get in and give, uh, give their sympathy to Debbie. Um, for having to subject yourself to <laughs> driving a Dodge, a Dodge Dakota. I'm sorry, Debbie. I'm going to say it. I mean, they some of them look cool, like the Dodge Dakota looks cool, but they're junk. They're kind of sh- they're kind of shitty. They're kind of shitty, Debbie. <laughs> love you, Debbie. I love you. <laughs> uh, what the fuck is this? What in the hell is this? What the hell is this? Oh my God. All right. We got, I, I, listen, this is the kind of fucking fuckery that the, the fucking fam creates. There is a scene and I kind of repeated a line from the scene this morning. And, um, in light of, you know, grandpa poopy pants the fentanyl fears tweet here, uh, about the bloodbath thing. You know, I said that we're not, we are not, listen, I do not do this fucking show two hours a day to learn up some Nazi lesson in humanity, okay? Calling fucking migrants animals and saying they're not people. That's the worst of the comments. Fuck the bloodbath shit. We're well past being a f- being surprised that he would say, bloodbath, bloodbath, bloodbath. But because I repeated the lines, apparently the internet has shit this out. Let's take a listen here. Now, I don't know about y'all, but... I sure as hell didn't come down from the goddamn Smoky Mountains, cross 5,000 mile of water, find my way through half of Sicily, <laughs> jump out of a fucking aeroplane to teach the Nazis lessons in humanity. Nazi ain't got no humanity. They're the foot soldiers of a Jew-hating, mass-murdering maniac, and they need to be destroyed. I don't know. I actually, I don't know. Can you tell whose face this is? I, I think, I don't know. I think Brad Pitt looks better in this version than the original. Uh, this movie is the Inglorious Bastards, and it is the scene where, look at that! I'm telling you, I actually think I actually think Brad Pitt is now better looking in this version um, than he was <laughs> than he was in the original. I don't know. Here, let me play it back again, and we'll see. Let's see. Now, I don't know about y'all, but. I sure as hell didn't come down from the goddamn Smoky Mountains, cross 5,000 mile of water, find my way through half of Sicily, and jump out of a fucking aeroplane to teach the Nazis lessons in humanity. Nazi ain't got no humanity. <laughs> They're the foot soldiers of a Jew-hating, mass-murdering maniac, and they need to be destroyed. And they need to be destroyed. I don't know. Does that guy look familiar? Does he look, does he look familiar? Does that guy look familiar? I mean, if I didn't have the beard, probably it'd be better. If I just had the mustache, maybe you could tell. <laughs> the internet swapped the face of Aldo Rain uh, from, uh, yeah, the internet did it. <laughs> Must have been the laboratory. I don't know who this was, but they face swapped it. Oh, where can you download? Zeppi wants to know where you can download. Go to Twitter. Go to thetonymichaels.com. Find me on Twitter. That shit's all over social media already. I bet that shit's on my Instagram, too. Speaking of that, I don't think I push go live on Instagram. Fuck. Fuck. I forget that every goddamn day. You guys got to remind me of that shit. You got to remind me to hit. Yeah, fucking total face plant on that one. You guys got to remind me every day to hit go on Instagram. If I'm not hitting go on Instagram, go in the comments. Because we got, see, we got four people already joining over on Instagram. I want to apologize to all the people on Instagram. It is not my fault that, <laughs> that I didn't join today. Folks, Did I, I forget. Instagram is a completely different fucking animal when I'm streaming to it. It's completely different. It's completely fucking different. I don't know why, but I gotta I I have to I have to turn on the show and then I gotta go to Instagram, do a couple things, and then hit the fucking button. Yeah, it's an animal. Like Donald Trump thinks migrants are animals. He did. He said that. He said that shit. He said migrants are animals. Oh well, fuck it. <laughs> All right. Let's watch this one more time. I think this is fun. Now I don't know about y'all, but I sure as hell didn't come down from the goddamn Smoky Mountains, cross 5,000 mile of water, find my way through half of Sicily, and jump out of a fucking aeroplane to teach the Nazis lessons in humanity. Nazi ain't got no humanity. 
They're the foot soldiers of a Jew-hating, mass-murdering maniac, and they need to be destroyed. And they need to be destroyed. I didn't jump out of a fucking aeroplane. <laughs> oh, Skip gives credit to Phony Tony. It was all Phony Tony's fault, this clip. That's what you get with the fucking fan, man. You get a lot of people. A lot of people creating clips. A lot of people um, coming in to make sure to create fuckery and art. By God, this is fucking art, my friends. Yeah, yeah, you're stealing some other people's art to make your own interpretation of it. But that not that what art is at this point? <laughs> I didn't jump out of a fucking airplane to teach Nazis lessons in humanity. And neither should you. Especially this fucking Nazi. The fentanyl Fuhrer bloodbath. Well, let me show you some of his other words. We all probably have heard the fucking bloodbath blood shit. Bath. Um, and I'm going to give you context. Speaking of phony Tony's clips, I'm going to give you some context on another clip. But I want to show you a video. The, the clip that I think is the most despicable, vile thing that this fucking piece of shit said over the weekend. Now, he said a lot of despicable shit, and he's going to continue to say despicable shit. And I I'm telling you, he hasn't even got to the worst shit he's going to say yet. It's not even at the worst of the worst yet. Like, he's not there to the bottom of the barrel. We can still go lower. Yes, it's true. We can get lower than what he's already got. Gotten. Getting? What is it? I don't know. I'm a hillbilly. <laughs> But here is some of the words that he said about migrants and how he thinks it presents their humanity. He he calls them he calls them that they're they're not people. Is that what he says? Let me I'm trying to look for the clip here. There's so many clips. I apologize. There's so many. We got so many fucking clips. Oh my god. It's so fucking ridiculous. Oh, my God. Here we go. Oh, no, that's not it either. Fucking shit, man. He said so much despicable shit. Um, where is it? And I know a lot of people got stuck on the bloodbath thing, but this is the one that did it for me. This is the one that did it for me. Here we go. Dayton, Ohio brings Donald Trump in to call brown people animals. Years, if you call them people, I don't know if you call them people. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion. But I'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says that's a terrible thing to say. They say you have to vote against him because did you hear what he said about humanity? I've seen the humanity and these humanity, these are bad. These are animals, okay? And we... They're animals, okay? Okay? Listen, I don't see humanity in them. I don't see them as humans. I'm admitting it. And when the left says that I say that, I definitely say that. And the bloodbath thing is the worst thing he said? No fucking way. We know We know he wants, he wants people to kill us if he loses. Right? We know that. Duh. He done did that shit. He done did that shit. Right? Now he's saying that these are animals, that he's going to kill them because they're animals, because that's how he wants to treat animals. That's how Donald Trump treats animals. You just kill them. They're, you know, they're, they're sacrificial. He doesn't, pfft. fuck, put it on a fucking Big Mac for me or something. Maybe, maybe he'll make Mexican Big Macs. Like literally, he'll take brown people, they'll kill them, grind, grind them up. I mean, you know. Alex Jones liked to eat leftist ass. I'm assuming he likes to eat leftist flesh, maybe. Or brown people flesh. I don't know. He sees them as animals. Cattle are animals. Beef is an animal. He likes to eat what you might consider beef on a Big Mac. Maybe he will. Let me play it again for you. Listen. Years, if you call them people, I don't know if you call them people. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion. But I'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says that's a terrible thing to say. They say, you look at all the people, all the white people smiling back here. Like, he, 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 yay, he thinks the brown people are people. Yay, they're not people. That means we're people. 
That means we're people. Yeah. Fucking rubes. You have to vote against him because did you hear what he said? Look at this guy right here. The one brown person in the entire crowd. And you see this guy with the glasses on here? You see this Nazi right here? I might show you who that fucking asshole is. I might show This guy seems like a Nazi right there. But this guy in front of him, he's like chuckling, kind of scared. Watch him. Oh, no. He's got, oh, shit. He's talking about killing me. Oh, shit. Look at him. Look at him. He's kind of scared. Hey, they say you have to vote against him because did you hear what he said about humanity? I've seen the humanity and these humanity, these are bad. These are animals. Okay. And we have to. He's got his head down. Oh, shit. He's calling me an animal. Oh, no. Oh, no. But you see this guy right back here? Look at this guy. Look at this Nick Fuentes looking motherfucker right here. See that fucking piece of shit? He's a Nazi. <laughs> he's a neo-Nazi. And he's in the background at a rally where he's talking about where, where the fentanyl Fuhrer is talking about fucking blood baths and killing animals are migrants, but he's calling them animals. That's what he's calling them. That's what he wants them to be. Let me show you who this guy is. I didn't know this until I found an account on Twitter that pointed this out. And I'm kind of excited I found this account uh, on Twitter because it follows around a bunch of Nazis in Michigan. And if you're not aware, there is a Nazi problem, a neo-Nazi problem in Michigan. They got a lot of these fucking, you know, uh, meal team six types that think they're in a militia and shit. And they think they're going to, you know, go steal our government or whatever the fuck they think. I don't know what it is these people really think that they're going to do, that they're going to fucking somehow upend our military or some shit. Unless they win the election and then he's the the fucking the fucking dictator and then he can dictate what they're gonna do. But unbeknownst to them that DOD actually has chain of command and they can't they can't fucking be doing unconstitutional shit and illegal shit. It's one thing the military can't do. All right, here it is. This guy is named Luke Malice. That's who this guy is. Who oh, Tony, you're doxing him. I'm not doxing him. He showed up at the fucking rally. Look at him. Look, this is a picture of him without the stupid fucking glasses. But look at this Nick Fuentes type. Now, this Luke Malice is, tur is Turning Points USA Great Lakes regional manager and the Midland, Michigan's resident fascist, pumping his fist in support of the orange Hitler. Malice Miles is one of the most active organizers of fascism in Michigan. This post goes on. Here he is. He's a rising star, promotes fascist political candidates. Here he is with the Tixie, is it Tixie Duder? Oh, no, it's Tudor Dixon, whatever the fuck her name is. Oh, here is he with another one. The literal son of a Nazi and a Michigan house rep hanging out with fucking Nazis. Oh, oh, you want another one? There's another one. Here we go. You want another one? Here he is hanging out with more fascist. Oh, look, Charlie Charlie Kirk endorses Luke. He endorses him as a candidate, or excuse me, as a delegate for Michigan. And that's who's standing behind Donald Trump pumping his fist. This Ning, Nick Fuentes-style Charlie Kirk neo-Nazi. I wonder what it could be about the bloodbath talk and the black and brown people or animals talk. That Charlie Kirk doesn't want black people to fly planes. That this guy supports Turning Points USA and is pumping his Nazi fist at this fucking Nazi rally. Huh. Wonder what it could be. Wonder what it could be. Could it be that Donald Trump, and when he's talking about migrants being not people, and uh, listen, they don't want me to dehumanize them, but I'm going to. I'm going to totally dehumanize them. They're not humans. That's literally what he said. I don't need to play it again for you, I don't think. Fucking asshole. And they think the bloodbath clip is the worst clip. It is not the worst. The bloodbath is not the worst part. <laughs> uh, they're talking over on Discord. Darren says he's a fake delegate, no doubt. <laughs> 100% he's a fake delegate. 
Um, but here's how the media roll with the bloodbath comments on Sunday. And this fucking freaked the right out. Watch this. Bruce in for Lindsey Davis. We begin tonight with the race for the White House and former President Trump's campaign now on the defensive after his fiery rhetoric at a rally in Dayton, Ohio on Saturday night. Trump warning while discussing the economy that there would be a, quote, bloodbath if he is not reelected in November. This after the former president kicked off the event by paying tribute to those who attacked the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. President Biden's campaign swiftly denouncing those comments as threats of political violence because that's what they are yeah dirt the media is finally on track here but we got to keep them on their toes we cannot we can't just expect that yes they're oh they're in the fight now nope we got to keep them on their toes folks because there's a lot of people out there that get distracted by little shiny objects okay they get really fucking distracted by shiny objects and we must not fucking relent on keeping them not distracted. We got to keep in the fight here and keep them paying attention. Um, they're so fucking weirded out. Even uh, Benny Johnson is freaked out that Rachel Maddow would be on top of this. Look at this. Benny Johnson says the media is so offended by the term bloodbath, but they use it all the time. And I said, I can't wait for the clip of the fentanyl fear her doubling down on Civil War style bloodbath at the next Nazi rally. Because he's going to, folks. You know I'm a predictor of things. And it's not hard to predict these things when they happen. It's really easy to predict these things. Very easy. And what I'm predicting here is that Donald Trump will stand up in front of his crowd at the next Nazi rally. And he will lean into the phrase bloodbath Blood and he bath. will lean into the next civil war. It's what he will do without a fucking doubt. Not one doubt in my mind. And you shouldn't doubt me. You shouldn't doubt me. You should just understand that that is what he's going to do. But there was some clips from... <laughs> Actually, you know what? One more clip. I promised I'd play this. Here's the context. If MAGA is looking for context of the bloodbath statement, here's the video you should show them. Maybe if it'll load. Are you fucking shitting me? God damn it. It's the derp state fucking with me here. I'm almost sure of it. Yeah, it's the derp state. Messing with me because I'm telling the truth. Exposing these fascists for who they are. <laughs> So they're cutting down my goddamn bandwidth, I guess. Let me see if I can find this clip back. I'm almost there, I promise. I'm almost there. And then we're going to move on to some other clips. Here's the context. Here you go. If you want to show your maggot friends, if you have them, or family, a clip for context. Do not spread this around the internet. It's something you don't want to do. Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and white like supremacists. Proud boys. Boys. And right proud proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. They were peaceful people. These were great people. The crowd was unbelievable. And I mentioned the word love. The love. The love in the air. I've never seen anything like it. There's your fucking context, bitch. He's done this before, and he's going to try to do it again. But there is plenty to mock about this rally. There really is. Oh, my God. There's one clip that is hilarious. He admits two things in this clip. That he can't read, and he needs a teleprompter. Dude needs a teleprompter. I'm not kidding you. He needs a teleprompter. And then he, then he admits that he stiffs companies. <laughs> All the same breath. It's fucking great. Watch this clip here. Under Biden, the cost of rent is up 30%. Groceries are up 30%. Everything is up. Chicken's up. Bread is up. And I can't read this damn teleprompter. I can't read this damn teleprompter. Did you hear him? <laughs> he, need, he needs money and he needs a teleprompter.
Oh, he needs money and he needs a teleprompter. <laughs> and he doesn't have money to pay for the fucking teleprompter either. Listen. <laughs> This sucker is moving around. This sucker is moving around. <laughs> it's like reading uh, a moving flag at a 35 mile an hour wind. <laughs> She's got jokes. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if Joe Biden could read the teleprompter. Right? Isn't that what they always say? Isn't that what they always tell you? Oh, well, you're president. At least Donald Trump doesn't need a teleprompter. He doesn't need a teleprompter. He just comes out and he pukes up wild shit for two fucking hours. He doesn't need... Uh, he obviously needs a teleprompter. He needs one. Poor guy can't read it if it's moving a bit. But listen to what he wants to do to the teleprompter company. Listen to what he wants to do. And then they say Trump's a bad guy because I'll say this. Don't pay the teleprompter company. Don't, don't pay the teleprompter company because it's I chose a windy venue. That's what I did. Don't pay them. Don't, even though you have a contract, don't pay them. Stiff them. Stiff them. Don't pay them. Because I don't have any money. That's what they don't know, is I don't have money for the teleprompters. <laughs> oh, my God. So not only can he not read, he needs a teleprompter, but he can't afford one. <laughs> oh, Mega, you fucking boneheads are worthless. You're worthless that you can't pluck your head out of your ass long enough to see this shit. A motherfucker can't read the teleprompter. He needs one to fucking give a speech, and he can't even afford one even though he needs one because he's fucking flat-ass baroque. He's fucking broke. The other, here's the other uh, clip. I'm going to play this rally that you can mock. Apparently, the Republican, did you know this? The Republican trump back candidate uh, for Senate is a closeted gay man. <gasps> It's such a big surprise. His name is Steve something. What's his name? Steve, Steve uh, closet guy. I don't know what the fuck this guy's name is. Morano. Morino. Morino. Is that what it is? He's a closeted gay man. Apparently he was on some fucking app using his work email. This is the guy, Steve Marino. Morino. This guy loves one-on-one -on -one action with dudes. I mean, Steve, I, fuck, whatever you want to do, man. Just stop fucking telling people that they can't have one-on-one -on -one action with another dude. Stop telling us what we can and can't do, bitch. Okay? And we definitely aren't going to elect you to any office where you can tell us that we can't have one-on-one -on -one action that you want. But sex for me, not for thee. I ain't no for me. And not for thee. That's how these fucking people think. And then he and then he, he says this shit on stage. This is fucking hilarious. This is 19 seconds of hilarity. Listen to this. So there's something you need to know about me. Oh, really? There's something we need to know about you. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. You got my attention. You got my attention there, Fruit Loop. Let's go. Let's listen. I am one of the luckiest people you'll ever meet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here we go. He's lucky. Is he going to get lucky? Is he going to tell us about how lucky he got on the Grinder app? Is that what he's going to do? Well, let's hear it. Because 35 years ago. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 35 years? Easy, easy, buddy. Easy. You don't have to tell us how long you've been, you know, you know, doing the old thing. I Listen, you do you, man. You don't have to go in such detail, but do go on. I won the lottery and got to marry that woman right there. <laughs> Motherfucker went on stage and pointed out his beard. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. How fucking humiliated do you think she is? <laughs> oh, fuck.
dog me. He's like, <laughs> listen, I got to tell you something that no one knows about me. That right over there is a woman I married, so no one knew I was gay. <laughs> oh, my God. You Republican closeted gay people are fucking wild, man. It is wild stuff. Look, if you would just stop, right? If you would just stop calling your fucking wife a lottery ticket, because that's what he did. Not only did he point out his beard, oh, my God, but he called her a lottery ticket. What the fuck? <laughs> Oh, that's exactly what a woman wants to be is a fucking lottery ticket. <laughs> oh, my God. These guys are wild, man. I can't even believe they... I, I don't even understand how they can get women to be within 10 feet of them. I really don't. I really don't. I really don't. I'm not... I'm, seriously, I'm... I'm... I... I what in the fuck? She's a lottery ticket? <laughs> That's how he views her? Listen, listen, migrants are animals, but women, they just might be lottery. Some of them, some of them, some of them are lottery tickets. Some of them are, especially the ones with the fake titties. Have you seen Mar-a-Lago? You're not allowed into Mar-a-Lago without a set of fake titties. It's not a thing. We have no women at Mar-a-Lago without fake tits. They're all titties and they're all fake. Even the fucking titties at Mar-a-Lago are phony. I don't know. I'm getting off track here. But this guy says, this guy says that his wife is a lottery ticket. <laughs> Dude, listen. Does the lottery ticket know, does the lottery ticket know that you like to fuck dudes in between your time advocating against gay rights? Does, does the lottery ticket know that? Huh? Does does your wife, the lottery ticket, know that in between the time that you're advocating to get rid of gay rights in this country, that you're banging dudes? Does she know that? I'm just wondering. That's a question that I think the media should ask this fucking asshole. <laughs> he has something he's got to tell us. <laughs> Listen, I got something I got to tell you. I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh, wild stuff, man. This is Republican politics. And you say we can't win Ohio. <laughs> you say we can't win Ohio. Come on, man. We can totally win Ohio. Speaking of mocking people. Okay, we're going to move on here. I promise, I promise. Uh, but I want to go back to um, another closeted gay man. He was, uh, this picture will prove it to you. Here he is standing in front of his new Elon butt, bot, but, well, maybe they did something like that. Elon purchased truck, quote unquote, because it's not really a truck. You got to give the thumbs up. Oh, look, Elon sent me a Cybertruck, so I'd say nice things about him on my Twitter account. Her, so cool. This truck is so nice, so cool that I'll tweet about it. I'll even put a picture of me with my thumbs up, so that way Elon feels good, so he doesn't cancel my, my Twitter account. You're a fucking rube. Holy shit, man. Now, first off, first off, you look really stupid in front of your cyber truck because it's not really a truck. And I'm about to show you a video that is foolproof evidence that this thing is not a fucking truck. But why does the guy, why, why does he have two sets of glasses here? Does he not have transitional lenses? Oh, that's right. He doesn't have transitional lenses because he thinks they're woke. He's like, whoa, 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 doc. What is this trans lenses thing? Do my lenses have penises and vaginas? I don't think so. I don't think so, Doc. I need two sets of glasses. I can't have trans lenses. What are you, crazy? My lenses are transitioning from women to men. Fucking bonehead. Look at this idiot. Get a set of transitional lenses. If you can afford Elon Musk sending you a goddamn... Um, truck. So, and if you look, if you actually look really close, he parked it in front of an actual truck. You see that? 
<laughs> Do you see that behind it? There's an actual truck parked behind the fucking Elon's, whatever the hell this thing is. There's an actual truck parked back there. I can't tell what it is. That might be a Silverado. It might be. Maybe it's a Toyota Tundra. I'm not really sure. Um, but there is an actual truck parked behind it. <laughs> But this is supposed to be the cyber truck, and you should be pointing and laughing at them like they got their little penis out every time you see one of these assholes in one of these things. Because here's why. They are not actually a truck. I'm telling you, I, I don't know. That, see, this is the the what they're calling a truck, and this is a mud puddle. I don't know if you see that there. It's a mud puddle. But here's what happens when one of these trucks drives through a mud puddle. Watch this. Oh, yeah, yeah, woo! Yeah, it drove through 12 inches of water. What, what's that sound? Ooh, ooh, oh, that, ooh, oh. Whoops. Ouch. Let's watch it again. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. There's the water. Oh, yeah. Yeah, woo, yeah, yeah, woo! Ooh. Oh. So apparently you can't get it wet. <laughs> apparently it's like Ben Shapiro's wife. It just can't get wet. It won't get wet at all. You can't get it wet or it shuts the fuck down. It, it has to be dry as a fucking saltine cracker. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. What a piece of shit, man. It's a truck. <laughs> fuck, man. I've seen I've seen Honda I've seen Honda Civics that can make that mud puddle better than that fucking truck. Okay? The American made Elon truck. Okay, yeah. Truck. You need to fucking go back to your definition in the book called the dictionary and find the word truck and then come back and talk to us. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. So sad. So sad that it can't it's like Ben Shapiro's wife. It just can't get wet. What do you want from me? I didn't say it. He said it. He said it. He said that he can't get his wife wet. What do you want from me? Ben Shapiro said that shit. Ben Shapiro said that he can't get his wife wet. I don't have to tell you. Why are you mad at me? <laughs> you know, people are mad over the weekend um, about uh, St. Patrick's Day. My friend uh, John Walsh posted this video there's a bunch of trump supporters that are really mad about saint patty's day so much so that they wouldn't hold up saint patty signs they went and held up trump signs at saint patty's day this is weird let's watch <laughs> That's literally in front of Trump Tower during the St. Paddy's Day parade. They, they weren't wearing St. Paddy stuff. They were, um, <laughs> they had fucking <laughs> Trump gear on. Not even green Trump gear. You think they would have, you know, at least went with a little bit of a grift. I mean, if you're going to grift, grift good. And fucking wear green Trump stuff with a shamrock on it. You know what I mean? Uh, but here's a really St. Pa a real St. Paddy's Day uh, video that might get you fired up. This is uh, this is Dropkick Kick Murphy. It's Ken Casey. Now this is from a couple years ago, but listen to Dropkick Murphy. You talk about St. Patty's Day. This is the band that'll teach you some shit. Take a listen. If you were part of a union or working class people who were allowed to build a better life in the middle class in America, you fucking listen to us. <laughs> Because if you're out there buying those fucking hats that these swindlers are selling at that fucking fair, I'm sorry, kids, I know there's kids here, then you're a part of the problem, and I'll tell you why. Because you're being duped by the greatest swindler in the history of the world. You're being duped by a bunch of grifters and billionaires who don't give a shit about you or your family. They care about their fucking tax breaks and the money they can put in their pocket. If you consider yourself a patriot and you're spouting off that election denying shit, I will fight your ass outside if you want to. Yeah. It... Wake the fuck up! We're working class people 
These people are the fucking rich, the billionaires, and they don't give a shit. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Yeah, that's right. You want to put on that stupid fucking hat? Spout your stupid fucking lies about this country? Good. I'll fight you in the fucking parking lot. I will fight you in the parking lot. <laughs> fucking assholes. Not going to happen. Not in this fucking country. Dumb fucking rubes. Oh, boy. Let's see. What else do we have? What else do we have? Oh, yes. Um, he sang with the January 6th insurrectionist. He did that. January 6th hostages. Yeah. Yeah, he did that. Uh, oh, oh, there was a clip that uh, we posted. Um, we, uh, we took it from a friend. And I'm going to play the friend's clip here. And it's of Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about bloodbaths. Uh, here's the clip. Honk if you want a bloodbath. Now, <laughs> a lot of people thought this shit was real. And you know what? It kind of is, really, honestly. She would fucking, she would fucking hold this sign. She 100% would hold this fucking sign. Right. No way would she not hold this sign. And the reason why is because she an idiot, because if she really listened to the context of the bloodbath com comments, she, she would know that the bloodbath comments were that if Trump loses. Uh, so if the sign says honk, if you want a bloodbath, then it would be honk if you want Trump to lose. So she totally is a big enough idiot to hold this sign. Um, but even then, she believes in the bloodbath sentiment. I mean. She is 100% an insurrectionist. She helped the insurrectionist. She coddled the insurrectionist. She still defends the insurrectionist. She calls them hostages. She goes to the jail where they're incarcerated for the treason that they committed on our country, and she defends them. So, of course, she would, you know, she lives by the sentiment that if we don't win, if we don't win, if we lose, if we lose, then we'll be sore losers and we'll try to commit violence in this country. So she 100% is on board with bloodbath as she loses. But yes, this is a fake clip. Is it real or is it now it's the old style fake, right? What do I mean by the old style fake? Someone did it in a software. So it's photoshopped, right? Now, uh, I don't know how much, uh, how, how accurate this looks. Right. I actually didn't believe it to be as good as some people believed it to be. Yeah, go Trump! But a lot, I'm going to mute it here and I'm going to replay it so you can see it. But a lot of people really believe this. And the reason why is because they put a lot of effort into making the sign look real. Uh, they didn't put much effort into making it look like it was manipulated. But if you really pay attention to it, you can tell that it's manipulated. Now. A lot of people got confused and they were really pissed off. They're like, no, you're taking it out of context. You're totally taking it out of context, Tony. Even um, even the community notes on Twitter says, this clip of MTG sign is sometimes digitally altered as a meme. In the earlier version, for instance, it says honk if it's his jail time. <laughs> and then they link you. That's so hilarious. Fucking community notes totally fucks with them. It links you to a YouTube video of honk if it's his jail time. <laughs> so they're like, hey, this is fake. Here's another one, fake one. <laughs> that totally makes for, hey, if you like this fake one, you'll like this other fake one. Wink. And good layup, community notes. I love it. I love it when, um, I love it when, uh, Elon's Twitter backfires on him and backfires on the right wing. You know what I mean? Just totally fucking owns him. Like in that instance. I don't know. I think it's funny. That's the whole reason why I showed it to you is because I thought the community, community notes were hilarious. Hilarious. All right. I've got a few uh, Christian nationalist um, things that I want to show you. Um, oh, one more. One more. One more I want to show you. 
They're really excited about a rapper named Kodiak Black. I'm not really familiar with Kodiak Black. I, I don't know who this is. I, I don't, I, I honestly, I don't listen to a lot of rap music, some rap music, but not, not a lot of rap music. I mostly listen to like 80s and 90s country, if you can believe it. Um, some, some pop music and, you know, rap and stuff from the late nineties, early two thousands. Cause you know, that's when I fucking was in high school and college and shit before I dropped out twice. Um, but I don't know who Kodiak Black is. I, I, I have to admit, I have no fucking idea who this is. I don't even know if he's fucking relevant. Uh, some people are saying he's a weirdo. Well, you're going to see in this, um, you're going to see in this, uh, clip that not only is it weirdo, he's, Oosh. He doesn't know shit about shit. Uh, but let's listen if you can hear in here. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, appreciate it. This year? Of course. We had Donald Trump for like 20 years. Like yeah, how, yeah, yeah. like how Russia and all that shit. Like, like, like for four years ain't enough time for a president. Like, you know, to build like, on. That ain't enough time for motherfucker to fix what the last one yeah, did. Yeah. So we need Trump for like way more than four years. Uh, yeah, we need like Russian stuff. You know, like Russia. We need like Russian stuff. That's what we need. We need like Russian. Jesus fucking Christ. And of course, it's some fucking Russian agent that's posting his shit on Twitter. Uh, you fucking pieces of trees in this trash. Posting this shit like, yeah, that's a great thing that he said we need four more years. Four more years? Or, or 20 years of Trump? Number one, that motherfucker ain't going to survive the cheeseburgers, okay? He ain't got 20 more years of Big Macs left in him. All right, dudes, dudes hobbling around, dragging his right leg already. No fucking way is this guy going to survive 20 more years of McDonald's and buckets of KFC. All right, not going to happen. But if you're talking about Russia, like I think you're talking about Russia, maybe just maybe you're not understanding uh, what happened in Russia over the weekend. If I can find a clip of it, I think I have it here somewhere. Now, I can show you, uh, well, maybe not. I thought I retweeted it. I pulled a bunch of clips this weekend. I'm sorry. There's so many fucking clips. So many clips. Uh, Russia, election, Putin. Let's see if I can find a clip for you here. Uh, there were several clips that were coming out of Russia where, uh, here, this is a good, great one. Uh, here is, um, here's Putin's election here. If you want to take a look at it, here we go. Oh, are you voting in there? Did, how'd you vote there? Oh, how's this guy going to vote? How are you going to vote? Oh, yeah. At gunpoint. Hmm. That's how Kodiak Black wants it here in America. Is he wants, he wants it like Russia, like Russia, oh, Russia. Uh, if no one knows, Putin was elected with like 90% of the vote. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. 90% of the vote? Come on, man. Give me a fucking break. You think that Vladimir Putin is going to get 90% of the vote, especially in, in parts that, uh, of like Crimea and shit? Get the fuck out of here, man. Everybody knows this shit is bullshit with Putin. He's won another another term, another eight-year term. Why do you think Vladimir Putin is so goddamn scared that Joe Biden is going to win this next election and so scared that Democrats are going to turn out the vote you're going to get so fucking pissed off that these fascists are trying to strip away women's rights and LGBTQ rights that you're going to flock to the polls and you're going to bury them underneath fucking mountains of votes and not only get Hakeem Jeffries to be the Speaker of the House, but get make gains in the Senate, giving Joe Biden a majority in both houses so that he can fucking defend Ukraine and stomp fucking Putin's ass so much so that it's a Blood bath. Blood bath on Putin. Blood bath. That's right. A blood bath on Putin. And that's what Vladimir Putin is scared of. That's why he's fucking gaming up the vote there in Russia to make it look like he has 90% support of the Russian people in his election. Give me a fucking break. Ridiculous. But speaking of Russians... Speaking of Russians, <laughs> Tucker Carlson got fooled. <laughs> I 
I'm not kidding you. Have you heard this Kate Middleton shit about the photo? I have no idea what this story's about. Honestly, I could give two fucking shits less. Actually, I give less of a fuck than two shits about the royal family, if you want to know the God's honest truth. Anytime I hear any news about the royal family in the UK, I want to fucking puke. I want to fucking puke. And the reason why I want to fucking puke is because this is what these fucking shitbags want in our country, is for us to worship a family of people who have a bloodline. Give me a fucking break. Take your monarchy and stick it up your fucking ass. Listen, we fought a war over that shit so we wouldn't have to listen to your nonsense about no fucking monarchy. All right. We didn't want a king. That was the whole fucking point. The whole point was to not have a fucking king. Bloodbath. You dummy. Yeah, the fucking and the Revolutionary War was a bloodbath and we won. That's why we don't have to listen to your nonsense about no goddamn fucking monarchy. But apparently people give a shit about a photo. I don't know what this is about. I have no idea. I really honestly don't know. I guess they fucking photoshopped a photo of her. Like, who gives a shit? Of course it did. <laughs> Paul says, it's entertainment for some, Tony. I'm just telling you my fucking opinion, Paul. Yeah, you can dissent here. You get to fucking have your own opinion. I'm glad you typed in the chat and coming at me. But fuck the king and the queen and the fucking royal family. Fuck them. <laughs> the only ones I respect are the ones who left the royal family and told them to go fuck themselves. You're a bunch of racist bigots. Fuck you. Apparently, Kate Middleton, what is she, the Duchess of whatever? The Duchess of some fucking place. I don't know. I don't know how it works. The royalty thing is beyond me. I could give a shit less. If you want entertainment of the royal family, go watch Netflix. It's on there. <clears throat> But apparently she photoshopped this picture, I guess. I don't know. But the best part about it is, is that Tucker Carlson got fooled. That's right. Watch this video. I'm going to double time this fucking thing so we can watch this thing faster because I want to get through some of this. Watch. That was great. And it was really interesting too. I thought... Expect to be as as I was. Is this Kate Middleton? Kate Middleton, Princess of Wales, has taken a number of weeks off of royal duties, and it's caused some to believe that the public are not being told something. Conspiracies have ranged from her being far more unwell than we are being told to that she's got a Brazilian butt lift. She's been gone. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck, I don't know where to fuck it. Who gives a shit where she is? She's royalty. Does it matter where she is? What is she doing? Does she do anything important for the UK? Is there anything she does important besides stand in front of a camera and smile? She's someone's wife. Is that really? I mean, is that, that what we're doing? I mean, we have celebrities in this country. And some of them are celebrities because of who they're born to. But that's fucking rare. Most of them have sex tapes. You know, and that's how they become fucking celebrities in this day and age. The Kim Kardashians of the world. You got to have a sex tape, you know? You got to have a fucking sex tape. I want to tell you. I don't know. Does Kate Middleton have a sex tape? I might watch it. I don't know. Just as long as a BBL takes the heel. To calm the public, she released this photo of herself with her children on Mother's Day, which drove the media into a frenzy, giving Archie and I an idea. Are the media so hungry for royal news that they'd interview anyone who claimed to know something about Kate and her famous photo? How <laughs> uh, is the media in a frenzy for bullshit news? You goddamn right they are. Are they ready to fucking report on shit that's totally fucking irrelevant? You goddamn right they are. And no one better to do that than... Carefully would they check. One globally famous journalist is Tucker Carlson, who, having been fired by Fox News, has interviewed Putin and covered some really important stories. And there's all really important stories, so important, Putin, and then sexy M&Ms. Also a plus-sized, obese, purple M&M, so we're going to cover that, of course. As well as giving airtime to utter crackpots. I mean, you're the only person on the set who's had sex with Barack Obama. He now broadcasts on his own streaming service and shares clips to his 12.5 million Twitter followers. But just how desperate would he be for a global exclusive? To put this to the test, I sent him an email claiming that Archie was Kate and Williams' digital content creator, who had been fired for photoshopping the image so badly people saw it was fake. Tucker calls and he fucking totally bought it. I'm going to fast forward this just a bit to the part to where they fool... Tucker Carlson, because they get him fooled. Here it is. So, half the night, probably ready done. Thank you. Tucker Carlson, two years, I think. No worries. Yeah, great. Thank you. No, you don't know. We're still talking. 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 We
Incredibly, Archie and all of his limbs were in the studio, moments away from speaking to Tucker Carlson. Surely he'd spot something was up and call off the interview. Maybe he's cheap money. Okay. Turns out actually he's not entirely real. The question is why? Tell us if you've done for best to verify that you would then. What you're saying is, you know, fake value or what you're trying to do. So if you would tell us what did you do for him? Um, so just before the coronation, I was asked to help out with some of that video. Okay, so this guy describes how he he didn't actually do this because he didn't actually do it. They didn't actually edit the photo. What they told Tucker Carlson is they told them that they're artists and they're the ones who fucking edited the photo of Kate Middleton. And Tucker Carlson is so feverish to get any kind of news that he can to fucking pump, pump lies to his fucking give base me, me, about me, anything and everything. That he's willing to fucking fall for this shit. Now, not only not only are they lying to Tucker Carlson about how they edited this photo, because they did not edit this photo. They create a whole video around this. They create a whole piece of content around this uh, about how they fool Tucker Carlson. They Tucker Carlson even asked for evidence that they did this, like like their their fucking credentials when they work for the Duchess or whatever. And they sent them fake fucking credentials in there. They even sent them a fake contract about the fucking the work that they did for the Photoshop. It's crazy stuff. And Tucker Carlson's team of producers checked none of it because if they would have checked it, they would have been they they intentionally put in red flags in this stuff. So not only is Tucker Carlson not checking, not checking to make sure he's legitimately interviewing someone about something as insignificant as Kate Middleton's fucking Photoshop family photos. Who doesn't Photoshop? Really, honestly, who doesn't Photoshop their family photos? Come on, man. What the fuck are we talking about? Why are we even doing this? But Tucker Carlson thinks it's a big story and he's not even willing to check that shit. How much do you think that Tucker checked? With his interview with Putin, huh? How much do you, how much work do you think they did? Do you think that's why Tucker Carlson went over to Russia and made a fool out of himself when he was amazed about sticking a fucking quarter in a goddamn shopping cart? You remember this video? He was amazed. He was like, "Oh my God, why don't we have these in America? We do, dumb motherfucker. We have those in America where you stick a fucking coin in and it gives you the cart." So that you bring the cart back to get your coin. It's a way to get you to return the cart. You fucking bonehead. But that's why Tucker Carlson is so amazed by that. Because he, he didn't do enough fucking thinking that maybe he should Google. Hey, is there any grocery stores in America that have that you put coins in the shopping cart? And it would have been like Aldi's, 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 Aldi's. Like the chat is now. The chat's like Aldi's, Aldi's, Aldi's. Yeah, that's all you had to do is Google it. Just Google it. There probably would have been fucking YouTube videos of it for Tucker Carlson to look at and go, oh, well, this isn't a Russian thing. This is just a, a fucking thing. But these guys fooled Tucker Carlson. Geography. I was then taken on in mid-May as a director, sorry, as a producer of digital content. And my job was to film them when they're out and about on public engagements. And you did that at uh, Yesterday morning. Having established who Archie was and what he did, Tucker asked him to explain his story. Um, so I was asked to uh, edit a photograph, a now quite famous photograph, of the three Cambridge children and the Duchess, which was released to celebrate Mother's Day. Uh, I was fired for negligence because the editing that I did was found. Uh, the reason the editing was shoddy is the editing job was, was almost too big to do. That photo that William and Kate's office and them themselves now have said um, they took last week to try and show Kate in good health wasn't at all taken last week. It was taken actually by Kate's uncle in Christmas time and uh, I had to edit a Christmas tree. It's an amazing question. You did this with the knowledge. You edited the Christmas tree and they're not. I mean, when Kate and William put that photo out, they knew that photo was taken at Christmas and they put it out alongside a statement wishing everyone a happy Mother's Day and told the world that William took it only last week. He didn't take it. Gary Goldsmith took it and it was taken at Christmas time. The best part is they actually edit a photo to put a Christmas tree in so that way they could tell Tucker Carlson that it was at Christmas. So they literally, they literally took a Photoshop photo, Photoshopped it with a fucking Christmas tree in it to fool Tucker Carlson into thinking that these guys are the ones who Photoshopped the original photo. Doyle rules. It's fucking bonkers. It's fucking bonkers. And really, honestly, I cannot believe that this won't ruin Tucker Carlson totally. It won't. It won't ruin him. And the reason why is because they'll be like, no, you're taking it totally out of context, Tony. Listen, listen, Tucker, Tucker is playing 2060 chess, okay? 
That's what he's doing. He's playing. He's trying to trick people into tricking him, so that way he can trick them into tricking them to know the truth. Because he's a truth carrier, or some stupid shit. We're taking it out of context. But this is who the right wing holds up as their greatest journalist. They fucking yammered on and on and on about how great this interview was with Vladimir Putin and Don and and and, and Chris Cuomo. Get the fuck out of here, man. Chris Cuomo can go fucking kick rocks. Chris Cuomo, you're a joke, too, for doing an interview with this fucking fool. Oh, we're just having a conversation. You remember that shit from Chris, Chris Cuomo last week? We're just having a conversation. This, this country should have conversations. That's what they should do. They should have conversations. Huh. Ha, 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 ha. Like, I don't know, talk about how the right wing wants to fucking take over our country and make it into a theocratic monarchy. They want a dictator for a day. They want to elect a fearer who will create a bloodbath, who will strip away our fucking government with Project 2025. Absolutely strip away our democracy from us. Piece by piece by piece by installing shit boxes like Tucker Carlson in our governments. He can't even check fucking simple fucking credentials to make sure the interview he's doing is real. And he's considered a journalist. What, are they going to make Tucker Carlson the, the chief propagandist? Huh. Wonder if they'll do that with Project 2025. And yes, they do want a fucking bloodbath. They are willing to go to prison for these fucking lies. Because they have gone to prison. And they are calling for people to go to prison. Don't believe fucking me. Believe the Nazis. Listen. But this is what American Moment is, and this is why I've been a huge supporter of this from day one, and this is why I come over and give the talks. Because there are not many people like the leadership of this organization. But more importantly, there's not many people like the young people that we're putting in on Capitol Hill into the committees into the second Trump term. In term it, it, you can't just talk about deconstructing the administrative state. You have to do it. You have to take on the deep state. You have to do it. You have to be prepared to go to prison. I got prison sentences all over. I got prison sentences all over, even though I'm not in prison. You fucking, you fucking scabbed up motherfucker. Wash your fucking clothes, bitch. Wash your fucking clothes, you nasty bastard. Why isn't that? Why why aren't we putting this motherfucker in jail? Didn't he get a prison sentence? I think he did. I think his appeals are about washed up. Let's put this motherfucker in jail. And there's not going to be a bloodbath. Oh, they're not talking about violence. That's not what they're talking about. Well, let me give you a clue. Let me give you a clue, you little maggots. You fucking Cheeto humping fuck nuggets. You think you're you think you're gonna bring the violence. That's what you think. And you think you're going to beat out Americans who believe in democracy. That's what you think. You think you're just going to take over our government. You think you're going to fire the entirety of the, of, the, of the federal civil workers. You think you're going to upend our fucking military, our veterans, our DOD, our national security apparatus. You think you're going to upend our state governments, our county governments, our school boards. You think you're going to get rid of our schools. You think you're going to get rid of our banks and our communities, our churches? You think you're going to get rid of that? What are you going to fight the civil war with, huh? What are you going to fight the civil war with? What What are you going to come to this bloodbath with? Are you going to roll in on your on your goddamn rascal? Is that what you're going to do? Huh? Is that what you're going to do? Are you going to fight us liberals, us pussy-ass libtards? Because you think we're a bunch of soft snowflakes. That's what you believe. That's what you think. That we're just standing here waiting for you to take over our democracy. And we're just going to hand it to you. <laughs> you got a fucking surprise coming. You got a real fucking surprise coming. That you think we're just going to stand back and stand by and let you fucking upend our country and our constitution. Because, folks, these are the fucking people that are going to go fight the Civil War for Trump. These ones right here. These are the people in Ohio. These are the people. And someone asked a question on online this, this weekend. They ask, why aren't these people the ones showing up at Mar-a-Lago? Because this truly is a gilded age. 
and they have totally convinced the downtrodden because most of these people probably actually have some plight because they've been duped in being poor. They've been duped into voting for the millionaires and the billionaires tax cuts because one day they might be rich. They've been duped into voting against workers' rights because that workers' rights don't trickle down like the fucking money that the, the job creators like Elon Musk have. These people have been duped into believing stupid fucking shit. Wild, stupid ass shit. And the reason why, the reason why these fucking assholes don't end up at Mar-a-Lago, there's only one reason why that I could come up with. I could only come up with one goddamn reason. I mean, there's a lot of them that sounds like, that sounds like it would be appropriate, but there's only one reason that I could think of of why they end up at Ohio sitting on fucking folding chairs, listening to the fentanyl fear her talk about a bloodbath as they cheer cheer on him t- telling them that brown migrants aren't people and the reason why they're at not at mar-a-lago eating his caviar that they're paying for literally they're feeding people caviar at mar-a-lago that these people are giving their fucking ssi and their social security checks to the reason why they're not is because none of these people have fake titties that is the reason why they are not at mar-a-lago they don't have fake titties None of these people in this picture who showed up to support Trump have fake titties. That is why they don't have a ticket to Mar-a-Lago. None of them have fake titties. They don't. They're not fake enough. They're not fake enough. Because they don't have fake titties. (laughs) It's fucking true. What do you want from me? These people don't have fake titties. That's why they're not at Mar-a-Lago. You ask the question, I give you the answer. And that's the fucking answer. Just like you should come here for the answers every single weekday, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern, 11 Central, 9 Pacific, two full hours. And get your fucking ass over to the Discord. What are you doing? What are you doing if you're not on the Discord? I have no idea. Go download the Discord app and then go to thetonymichaels.com and click the Discord server. Go join the fucking book club on Friday. They're going to have the book club. Hit them where it hurts. Hit them where it hurts. How to save democracy by beating Republicans at their own game by Dr. Rachel Bittacoffer, my friend. And she's the greatest political strategist that I know. I think that's out there. And this is not just a book. It's a guide to saving our democracy. Rachel's Bible is where it's at. So get into your book club and get into your Bittacoffer Bible study. Go download the Discord server app. Create an account. Get it on your phone. Do it. Now, and if you're not doing it, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know. I can't, I can't force anyone to do anything, but I'm going to force you to come here tomorrow. Same time, same place. Surf's up, motherfuckers. You've been listening to the Tony Michaels podcast. podcast. In your face commentary of current events and political news. No rules, no boundaries. I think we've made that perfectly clear. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll be back soon. In the meantime, follow Tony on social media at the Tony Michaels. And until next time, raise a fist and repeat after me. Fuck them. Murphy's Mealborn, head ass speaking. I sure as hell didn't come down from the goddamn Smoky Mountains, cross 5,000 miles of water, find my way through half of Sicily, and jump out of a fucking aeroplane to teach the Nazis lessons in humanity. Nazi ain't got no humanity. They're the foot soldiers of a Jew hating, mass murdering maniac, and they need to be destroyed. Now, I don't know about y'all, but. I sure as hell didn't come down from the goddamn Smoky Mountains, cross 5,000 miles of water, fight my way through half of Sicily, and jump out of a fucking aeroplane to teach the Nazis lessons in humanity. Nazi ain't got no humanity. They're the foot soldiers of a Jew-hating, mass-murdering maniac, and they need to be destroyed. Now I'm not-